Prepare to be intrigued as we explore an incredible discovery uncovered lately by sea surveyors studying the Baltic Sea. What they discovered can only be characterized as the wreckage of a crashed spaceship, which shocked the scientific community. This surprising discovery has revealed a massive secret about extraterrestrial life that has the potential to change our knowledge of the world as we know it. Could it be the ruins of an underwater civilization? How is this going to affect our ecosystem? Let's find out together. A group of subwater explorers discovered a 60 meter wide unique entity with a large disc twice the size of a football field deep beneath the icy waters of the Gulf of Bothnia in the Baltic Sea region. This discovery in the Baltic Sea is remarkable because the enigma surrounding its background is also known as the Baltic Sea Enigma and the Baltic Sea Mystery Object. It resembles a mushroom and rises 3 to 4 meters or 10 to 13 feet from the seabed between Sweden and Finland. Straight edges, building lines, and boxes appear to be drawn on the main item. The object's massive mushroom-like top also contains fractures filled with an unexplained black material. Many have referred to it as the giant stone, the portal to the other world, the underwater Stonehenge, or the alien stone circle formation, all created by a former civilization. The enigma surrounding the entity, however, stems not from a lack of understanding about its size and shape, but from the explorer's and other scientists' failure to identify why is it at the bottom of the sea. The entity is roundish, with a radius of about 18 meters, and is submerged at a depth of around 91 meters beneath the gulf's waters. Because of its unusual shape and suspiciously tall height of at least 13 meters, Scientists believe it is an unidentified flying object, or a UFO. As a result of such claims, the disc-shaped object and its surroundings were dubbed the UFO Baltic Sea. These allegations regarding the Baltic Sea mystery were bolstered when pavement-like platforms were discovered stretching from the creature for around 300 meters. Another aspect corroborating UFO reports in the Baltic Sea region was the inability of the explorer's electrical equipment like sonar devices and satellite phones to function while close to the mysterious creature. From above, the circle-shaped object resembles a Millennium Falcon from the Star Wars franchise. Although many scientists, geologists, and experts have claimed that the object could be a link in human evolution, or the base of a U-boat or a Nazi ship that drowned during the Cold War, a glacier, or a glacial deposit dating back to the Ice Age that appeared as a result of glacial thawing processes or post-glacial processes, none of these theories can explain why electrical equipment appears to malfunction near it. According to the experts, all electronic equipment stops near the mysterious object. All of the institutes that conducted the study, including the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Study Institute, and the Arizona State University researchers claimed the same. Surprisingly, some specialists believe the object is not made of metal. As a result, it could not be evidence of extraterrestrial contact. There are numerous theories about it. Many hypotheses attribute it to volcanic activity on the Baltic seafloor. Others believe that it could be a volcano, an asteroid, or a meteorite that landed on the seafloor thousands of years ago. An associate professor of geology at Stockholm University discovered a black material on the buried flying saucer. Because the entire northern Baltic region was prone to thawing, he suspected it was a black volcanic rock brought to the ocean floor by glaciers. Many people believe it's an alien spacecraft or a spaceship. Sunken UFOs or aliens have become popular among UFO believers. There are numerous misconceptions, but this notion cannot be dismissed. This theory is confirmed by the results of a Swedish diving crew, whose video footage indicates a 985-foot runway leading to the item, similar to a stairway. A diver reported that he had never seen anything like it in his 20-year diving career, and called it a missing experience. After the strangest item was discovered for the first time and preliminary results to learn more about the UFO-shaped object were unsatisfactory, additional study excursions were conducted. The original group of subwater explorers and several other worldwide scientists conducted a series of research operations to understand more about the true origins of the UFO-like object discovered at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. 
Researchers conclude that once vibrant geography was submerged under a flood of water and went unnoticed until explorers discovered it. Another conclusion was reached on a German ballistic object landing in the depths of the Baltic Sea during the height of World War II. This explanation has acquired belief, with many scientists, researchers, and military specialists endorsing and lobbying for it. Despite extensive research, the Baltic Sea mystery remains a mystery. Given the significance of the water body in context, however, the uniqueness of the concept of UFO Baltic Sea becomes a vital aspect offering priceless attention to the issue of the Baltic Sea mystery, eliminating skeptical comments about its existence. Numerous reports of UFOs flying into and out of our waters imply that these crafts have hidden underwater bases. They operate from clusters of similar sightings in the Black Sea, North Sea, and off the shores of Puerto Rico and California. However, not everyone shared the same viewpoint on the same issue, with some even dismissing the possibility of an extraterrestrial occurrence while pointing their hands towards Russia. Russia, on the other hand, has refuted these claims. Even a military spokeswoman stated that there are no extraordinary, let alone emergency situations involving Russian warships, which could imply that incredible things are occurring in the Baltic region. Similar extraordinary occurrences have occurred since, particularly when a ship from the Renaissance era was entirely covered in the depths of the Baltic Sea. What caused this to happen? Using cutting-edge underwater robots, a multinational team of scientists uncovered the remnants of a pristine early modern period, late 15th century to early 16th century shipwreck in the Baltic Sea. This is a significant discovery, since ships that predate the larger and more powerful ships later in history are extremely rare. Dr. Rodrigo Pacheco Ruiz, MMT's maritime archaeologist and deep sea archaeological expert, led the archaeological discovery and further photogrammetric survey in collaboration with Deep Sea Productions. The Swedish Maritime Administration, or SMA, discovered the shipwreck as a side-scan sonar target in 2009. Still, it wasn't until early this year, as part of MMT's Nord Stream 2 survey work, that the shipwreck was identified as having great archaeological and historical significance. It was a contemporary of Christopher Columbus and Leonardo da Vinci, with an astounding level of preservation after 500 years. The recent discovery and archaeological survey of more than 65 perfectly preserved shipwrecks in the Black Sea, some dating back to the Ottoman, Byzantine Roman, and Greek periods, and to depths of more than 2,000 meters, exemplifies the successful collaboration between MMT and the University of Southampton. According to the archaeological findings, the shipwreck could have occurred in the late 15th and early 16th centuries. The site is considered older than the warship Mars, which sank following an explosion during the First Battle of Land in 1564. Henry VIII's Mary Rose, 1510-1545, and the Swedish warship Vasa, 1628. This is a significant discovery, because locating ships that predate the larger and more powerful ships subsequently involved in the Northern Seven Years' Wars 1563 to 1570, in such incredible circumstances, is unusual. A crucial epic that establishes the course of modernization for these Scandinavian nations. Unlike the dispersed remnants of the warship Mars, which exploded in battle, this newly discovered shipwreck is still whole at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. Her hull structure is preserved from the keel to the top deck, with all of her masts and standing rigging still in place including the bowsprit and rudimentary decorated transom stern, as well as other elements of the ship rarely seen, such as the wooden capstan and bilge pump. The ship's tender boat, used to carry crew to and from the ship and leaning against the main mast, is still on the main deck. The swivel weapons, which are still on the gun deck, are a monument to the tensions and human interactions at the period. The shipwreck is strikingly similar to images of the Gripschunden shipwreck, which was discovered in Sweden in the late 14th century, and whose remnants are relatively few. This unknown ship is most likely the best preserved early modern period shipwreck ever discovered. You would have believed the Baltic Sea had no more mysteries to reveal, and that's exactly what researchers and maritime archaeologists thought before the discovery of another shipwreck called the Gripshunden. 
on the hull of a royal ship that sank off Sweden's Baltic coast more than 500 years ago. Archaeologists believe they have discovered a unique stockpile of well-preserved spices. The spices range from strands of saffron to peppercorns and ginger, and the archaeologists claim the find is unique. Since 1495, when it is believed that the ship Gripsunden, which belonged to King Hans of Denmark in Norway, caught fire and sank while the king was attending a political gathering ashore in Sweden, the ship's wreck had lain off the coast of Ronneby. The king was in Sweden at the time. After being rediscovered by recreational divers in the 1960s, the shipwreck has been the subject of periodic excavations in subsequent years. Significant artifacts, like figureheads and lumber, were discovered in the last dives. An excavation led by Brendan Foley, an archaeological expert at Lund University, has unearthed the spices buried in the silt of the boat, where they were initially buried. According to Mr. Foley, the Baltic is strange. It's low oxygen, low temperature, and low salinity, so many organic things are well-preserved in the Baltic where they wouldn't be well-preserved elsewhere in the world ocean system. But to find spices like this is quite extraordinary. Because only the wealthy could afford items such as saffron or cloves imported from outside Europe, spices would have been a symbol of high rank. They would have been accompanying King Hans on his journey to the gathering in Sweden, which he was attending. Mikkel Larsen, a researcher at the Lund University who had been investigating the discoveries, stated that the discovery was exceedingly unusual. Mr. Foley said that he planned to start searching other regions for comparable finds in the near future. He's looking for locations that give the best circumstances to protect wrecks, and the Caspian and Black Seas are two places that come to mind. The ship's many panels of elaborately adorned birch bark were another surprise. One features a detailed peacock design, while the other features an intriguing beast resembling a unicorn. These discoveries were so beautifully preserved that remnants of gold paint could still be seen on the pattern. Archaeologists believe that the monarch, who entertained crowds on the boat during his trips, ensured that his chambers were well decorated with textiles and tapestries. These extravagances, however, were not simply for Hans's comfort. The king gathered everything and everyone to impress on his flagship. The Swedish nobleman was waiting in Kalmar, but Hans didn't rely solely on soft power. The threat of violence was used to back up the rich, and more discoveries were made, such as a lint stock used in naval warfare to hold the burning fuse when lighting a can, a carved symbol on the handle, two vertical strokes, and a diagonal horizontal. Perhaps an owner's mark. The prongs, however, are burned from use. It is one among several artifacts that demonstrate the military prowess of Gripshunden. The iron cannons have mostly rusted away, but ten wooden gun carriages have been found. These carriages range from five to nine feet long and would have mounted swivel weapons in the ship's bow. The archaeologists discovered stern fortresses and a 13.5 foot long gun on both deck sides. Carriage is significantly more significant than any before found. Although archaeologists speculated that it could be an early example of what subsequent warships referred to as a stern chaser used to fire from behind. According to one historical source, the Gripshunden sailed with 68 guns, which could be correct given the evidence. That is to say, the ship signified a revolution, not only in ship design, but also in naval warfare. Many wicked sea conflicts were really land battles on a ship. The goal was to board an opposing ship and battle hand-to-hand -hand with swords and spears, but the large-scale move to larger Carvel plank ships and the invention of explosive ordnance equipped with massive cannons and guns was spectacular. This enabled lead ships to destroy opposing vessels and battle nearly entirely from a distance, with a design that remained unchanged until the 19th century. While archaeologists continued exploring Gripshunden just above the ship's hull, one discovered an undamaged crossbow more than three feet long in showroom condition. He gushed that the weapon was so well preserved that it still had the bowstring and all the ornamentation. The archaeologist stated, I've never seen anything like it. Weapons experts were ecstatic about the discovery of the ship as well. According to Guy Wilson of the Royal Armories, who specializes in early hand weapons, dated examples of crossbows from this period are nearly non-existent. Furthermore, 
The new discovery looks to be of relatively advanced design, which will be critical in understanding the evolution of this iconic medieval weapon. In fact, the team appears to have discovered a hitherto unknown tool, which one of the archaeologists characterized as a small arms locker. Months after the dig, the crew discovered four complete crossbows and seven wooden arrows known as quarrels. The wood leather or feathered flights of these arrows were likewise complete. The crew would also recover the wooden stock of an aquabus, or early pistol, and the suggestively carved grip of a bollock dagger famous among sailors for breaching an opponent's armor. Guy Wilson was ecstatic by the discovery, saying that having another dated example of European weaponry technology 50 years before the Mary Rose, a warship that sang in 1545, is quite interesting. It will be extremely vital for the products requiring years of research. Wilson, for example, noted that it had already taken three decades to finish analyzing the objects retrieved from the Mary Rose. Gripshunden, on the other hand, offers a view of warfare on the verge of transition, as hand weapons gave way to powerful artillery, and with it, the ability to wage battle from afar. These finds from the Baltic Sea are beyond are increasing, and the rate at which these discoveries are being produced represents a very modern force that still shapes warfare today. Since the discovery in the early 2000s, enormous ice rings on Lake Baikal in southern Siberia have perplexed scientists. Recent research into the ice rings has yielded a convincing explanation, but there is still more to learn about these strange patterns. Lake Baikal in Russia is the world's largest and deepest freshwater lake. It is also one of the oldest lakes in the world, dating back 25 to 30 million years. Lake Baikal is located in southern Siberia, between the Republic of Buryatia and the Irkutsk Oblast, and has a surface area somewhat more significant than Belgium, measuring 31,722 square kilometers. It is home to many fish species found nowhere else globally, and an endemic freshwater seal population. It also has odd ice rings that were discovered in the early 2000s using MODIS satellite data. A study published in the journal Limnology and Oceanography late last year, proposes a possible explanation for the unusual ice rings that frequently emerge on Lake Baikal during the winter months. An observer on the ground cannot see the overall shape of an ice ring. They're huge enough that their ring-like shape is only visible from planes and satellites. The insides of the rings are bright, but the outside edges are dark, where the ice is thin. According to the new research, the rings are 5 to 7 kilometers in diameter, with a 1 kilometer wide dark outer edge. During the Siberian winter, the rings can persist anywhere from a few days to a few months. Ice rings like this appear unique to Lake Baikal and its adjoining Mongolian lake, Lake Hovsgol, and Lake Teletskoye, a Russian lake some 830 miles west of Baikal. However, it is absolutely possible that they occur in the other lakes that have yet to be discovered. Their appearance is unpredictable, both in terms of time and location. The ice rings have been linked to various reasons, including meteorological or biological influences, complex hoaxes, and even alien activity. According to one popular idea, the ice rings grow due to escaping gas, specifically methane, which surges from the lake's bottom. However, the rings have been detected in shallow lake areas where gas leaks seem implausible. The new study's authors, a combined team from France, Russia, and Mongolia, organized field missions to Lake Baikal during the winters of 2016 and 2017. It analyzed thermal infrared satellite imagery of the ice ring to solve the enigma. The researchers bored holes near the ice rings and dropped sensors capable of measuring water temperature at depths of up to 660 feet. Every winter, measurements were taken twice, first in February and again in March. This proved to be risky work. On March 16, 2016, the ice layer beneath their van began to disintegrate, necessitating the driver and passengers to be rescued. And just two days later, it happened again. The researchers, known as the Fellowship of the Ice Rings, discovered a netty where water travels in a circular pattern at 45 meters beneath an ice ring in February 2016. The discovery gave the researchers an up-close look at the ice conditions at the late stage of ice ring formation. 
The water in the eddy was discovered to be one to two degrees Celsius warmer than the water around it, and the eddy took around three days to rotate completely. The crew discovered another eddy a year later, which had migrated six kilometers from its original location by the end of March. No ice ring was visible above the eddy, most likely because not enough time had passed for one to form. A similar phenomenon was observed in 2019, when a ring migrated nine kilometers from its starting point. The researchers believe the heated eddies are the primary source of the ice rings based on their observations. Thanks for watching. Remember to leave a like, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell.